USA versus Cuba after Frank O'Hara. It is 3.15 on a Saturday and I am in a car on I-95 on the way to the soccer game and Nate is riding shotgun, which is also the name for when you plunge something sharp into a can of beer and split open its aluminum shell before swallowing its urgent sacrifice. And I once saw Nate do this five times in one night before the Mount Union game and we got to the field late the next morning smelling like something coughed up in the heat of a 1980s summer and it was almost as hot then as it is right now in this traffic that isn't moving and hasn't moved for what feels like 30 years, which is to say that it feels like we haven't moved since we were too small to speak and burden everyone we love with our refusal to crawl back into silence. And every car on this highway is in park, and somehow people are still pressing on their horns, and Nate turns up the radio, and David Ruffin is singing, I wish it would rain, and his voice is unfolding long and slow in the back seat like an eager lover and there is a whole history of men demanding the sky to shake at their command and i'm not saying out loud whether or not i believe in god and i'm not saying out loud what i know the rain means i am only saying that i need this dry summer to stay dry i'm only saying that the tickets to this soccer game cost as much as my best suit and kickoff is at 3 30 and we are absolutely going to be late and there is a whole history of black people being late to things and there is a whole language signaling our arrival and there is an entire catalog of jokes that dissect this happening and they never get old and by they i mean black people in america and i can hear the joke our college soccer coach made when the only two black boys on the team stumbled late onto a hot field and lateness always makes for a good joke and the punchline is I slept through my mother's final breaths or the punchline is I stumbled into a living room thick with a family's grief while clearing a night salt from my eyes or the punchline is that I'm always running late I'm always running I'm always trying to move time backwards and tell everyone that I love them, and isn't that funny? And Nate points to an ambulance speeding down the highway opposite us and disappearing into the sun, and I don't want to think that there might be a body inside of it. And then all the cars start moving. That is one heck of a poem. All right, let's start somewhat chaotically to read something that you're seeing in the chat or anywhere in any of the commentary that can get us going. Who wants to start? Just read it out. What are you seeing? Uh, Sophia? Maria Berg said it stays in the immediacy of the present tense. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Jake, what are you seeing? Brain is sadness. Um, from Mona. Brain is sadness. What do you think that means, Jake? Well, um, the narrator does not says I will not I will not interpret what rain means um, and there is this menace of rain that's about to um, maybe maybe ruin the opportunity or not or just um, mess things up or some bigger what whatever it means it, it means a whole lot of things uh, mm. but uh, but Muna is, is suggesting that sadness like the minor key or, or mm. that realm of things as well as shout out to mona i've been watching mona's comments here and there in the forums they're great amber rose what are you seeing miranda says a, uh, a difference is uh the poem is very deliberately calling up multiple references and undertones or implications mm -hmm. and you want to respond to that um yeah w a question that um, Anthony dropped in my office hour chat was about the New York school being very, um, what you see is what you get. And with Hanif's poem, it feels that way. But then there are also these very deeply rooted, like deep historically rooted um, implications and all of these other touch points that's also compounding with the, the surface information. And he does that so masterfully. Mm. There's a lot of history in it. And more or less than O'Hara, I think more than O'Hara, because O'Hara is really thinking about New York of his day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Hanif is thinking about, sort of thinking about how all of so many days collapse into this moment of um, anxiety that he's feeling to get, to, to get moving. Mm -hmm. He's thinking about his 
maybe more immediate past with his mother and his family, but then a longer history that he's connected to as a black person in uh, in America. So there's this kind of collapse of time, whereas yes. Frank is so present in, in his immediate right. day. Right. It's a development of the New York s- school style. It's a development of I do this, I do that, maintaining mm-hmm. the present, maintaining the flow, maintaining the power of the conjunction and maintaining the paratactic presentness of everything while also exploring, for instance, the racialization of lateness and when traumatically you're not there for your mother's death, it is both your own individual failing and the failing that is historical yes. of lateness. It's just, it's just a magnificent way of dealing with this. Wow, wow, wow. Um, Kate, what are you seeing and what would you like to say? Sorry, I was muted. Um, there's a lot, I'm just seeing a lot about lateness. Um, Vijaya says, whole history of being late, whole history of language of our arrival. And I, when I read this poem, I, I feel the struggle to stay in the present tense and it always slips back into the past and the historical and the legacy of slavery, the legacy of family, colonial history, cultural heritage, lateness of arrival to this country, like catching up, like always uh, this motion of catching up. So the way it moves between past and present has that sort of like, like push pull quality. Like Mm -hmm. he's trying to catch up to Frank's mode, but can't quite get there. Mm -hmm. And uh, belatedness is such an important concept psychologically for the New York School and it's those who've been influenced by it. And indeed, the second generation New York School was belated and behaved as belated. (laughs) So many of them, Ann Waldman, Bernadette. Um, And then there's third generation, I guess you could call Eileen Miles a third generation New York School fighting that belatedness. What Hanif does is he politicizes and historicizes that belatedness as well, which is really kind of a miracle. Lainey, what are you seeing? I see um, Holly York wrote Movement Not Movement, which is such a brilliant, succinct way to talk about how um, in Frank O'Hara's poem, he's moving, and then at the end, he's still and he's breathless, whereas in USA versus Cuba, there's an inability to move, and then at the end, there's the ambulance which is moving and kind of mm-hmm. tracking that mm-hmm. movement of the ambulance. Mm. Allie, what are you seeing? I was thinking about the same exact thing, Holly York's comment, um, and that kind of inversion of like stillness and movement, mm. um, mm-hmm. particularly with the day lady died. Um, that feels to me like a, an almost like direct reference mm-hmm. um, here, even though it's not, explicitly called out. Gabby, are you able to see the YouTube chat? Yeah. Would you just scroll down and just quote four or five that strike you? Just put them into the record, and then I'll ask uh, Dave to respond to any of those. Sure. Uh, Hannah Linden, the body inside, it's so emotional, but feels less, it's so emotional, so feels less detached than some New York school poets. Um, uh, where's the, there was another one that I wanted. Where is it? Darlene Laguna n- notes that why punchline? Is there a joke somewhere? The joke's sort of getting buried. Um, mm. So many days collapse into this moment from Paige Paulsine. Also from LA. Darlene and Paige are both LA people. Good morning. Um, and then, uh, let's see, I don't want to repeat another person, but like Kim Coveney writes, historicizing belatedness is a pretty damn good poem, Al. I appreciate that. Dave, your thought? Um, one, one thing, there's a great comment by Darlene Laguna where she says, moving time backwards to stay away from the end. And what, what really strikes me about all this is first just reading the poem, um, there's such a sense of this present sense experience that's situated within this environment but it's also especially from all these comments 
an environment that's so situated in the idea of time. And even these contemplative reflections are not separate from that environment and not separate from that time. It, it's amazing how it all, the, the environment and the time just feeds into the understanding that's that's given out. out mm, in the nice. Book.